Hello and welcome back to my channel, The Curious Coder. Today we are going to talk about something that seems basic but is actually a very important interview question. The difference between application.properties and application.yaml in Spring Boot. Now this is actually the second part of a video where we are discussing environment properties. In the first part, we already saw how to configure environment specific properties using application.properties file. We also covered what Spring profiles are and how they help us manage different environments like dev, test and prod. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend you watch that first because that sets the foundation for what we are about to discuss. Okay. Now the obvious question is, why do we even need a YAML file when we already have a perfectly working dot properties file? That's a very fair question. There are two good reasons. And in this video, we'll discuss both with practical examples. Okay. So let's start with the first one. The first reason we might prefer YAML is because of its support for hierarchical structures. Okay, so let's continue with our example of server.port only. In application.properties, we will write it like this. But in application.yaml, the same thing would look like this. Okay, it's indentation based. Now, how is this helpful? Let me show you a bit more complex example and we'll find out. Suppose we have to add all the database related properties it will look like these in a properties file. And if we write the same thing in YAML, now just look at how much cleaner and organized this is. Right, in a properties file, all the keys are flat and there's no visual grouping. In a large project, you might have these lines scattered in different places far apart from each other. But in YAML, all the related properties are grouped hierarchically under one block. So it becomes really easy to find, read and manage all the related configuration settings. Right. Let's take one more example to build on this hierarchy. This time we'll take spring.jpa properties, which are commonly used alongside spring.data source. Okay. So here's how the config might look in a properties file. If you look at it, even though these properties are related, they are still just a bunch of key value pairs all flat. So you might write spring.data source at the top of the file and spring.jpa far below and it becomes difficult to see that they actually belong to the same database configuration context. Now let's look at the YAML version. Much better, right? Everything under Spring is structured clearly. We have data source and JPA, two separate blocks, but both are part of Spring. So visually, it's very easy to spot how your Spring Boot app is configured. This hierarchical structure is what makes YAML so much better when you have a lot of config. Okay. Now let's look into the second reason why we prefer application.yaml over application.properties. I have already created these different property files in my earlier video. So let me quickly give you a recap. This is the default application.properties file where I've configured server.port as 8070. Then I've created three different files for three different spring profiles basically. So in my earlier video, I've also explained what spring profiles are. Okay. Basically, we create different profile for different environment. Fine. So for dev environment, I have configured the port as 8081. For test, it's 8082. And for prod, we have configured it as 8083. Fine. And in the default one, it was 8070. Okay, then we also created this class employee. And I was trying to create its bean. But I have also configured it for dev and test environment. Okay. So that means that the bean will only be created if the environments are dev or test. It will not be created for the prod environment. Fine. So yeah, that's it. That was the recap. Now you can see that we have created four different files here for three different environments and one default application.property file, right? But using application.yaml, I could do all of this in just one file. Okay, and that's the reason we prefer application.yaml over application.properties. Okay, so let me show you. I'll just delete all these files. And I'll create a new file. Application.yaml. Cool. So by design, application.yaml supports multi-document files. Okay, so that basically solves our problem. We can create different document for different spring profiles and we can put all of them inside this application.yaml file. Okay. So let me show you how we just have to add these three dashes and it just creates a new document. 
okay so let's say this one this first one is the default document so i'll just configure server.port as 8070 okay then i have added this dash these these three dashes which have created a new document so now i'll create i'll use this document for the dev profile okay so uh, i have to add a property for that i'll just say spring config activate on profile okay and i'll write dev here fine so this means that we have designated this document for the dev profile okay and i can define a different server dot port here now server port as 8081 now similarly i'll create another document this one will be for test so i'll just copy paste now this is for test 8082 and here we can configure prod okay and uh, as i have told you in my earlier video we can define which which particular profile is active using the command line arguments so that i have done here like this okay so you can see minus d spring dot profiles dot active is equal to prod so right now prod profile is active okay so let's test it uh, in prod we have the port as 883 great so you can see that tomcat started on port 8083 and also that the bean of employee class is not created okay this this constructor is not called this is employee bean now if i'll just change it to test I'll rerun it. Great. Now it starts on port 882 and you can see that employee bean is also created. Fine. Similarly, I can test for dev as well. I'll change it to dev. So again the bean is created and it started on port 881 fine so this is how we can configure multiple string profiles using application.yaml in just one file okay so this is the benefit of using it and uh, as we discussed the first reason that the indentation does make it look good okay now if i remove server.port from here let's say i have commented it out and i rerun it So this time the port started on 8070 okay so server started on port 8070 because we didn't have any server.port in our dev profile and then it went back to the fallback default application.property basically default application.file okay so this first document fine now let's say uh, i want to configure database properties as well so as you know the database properties are let's say uh, i'll take one example uh, let's say we want to configure spring dot data source dot url okay so how will i configure that let me try it spring data source and url okay but it is giving me an error saying that key spring is duplicated okay so yeah because i already have written spring over here so i cannot write spring again here in the same document okay the key will be duplicated so this uh, basically restricts me that I have to write data source here okay I have to give it something like this data source URL okay and that's why I cannot uh, basically in YAML file I won't be able to write any property which has the prefix spring I will have to write it here only okay I won't be able to write it below or like uh, I mean I cannot uh, change its structure okay so it will be in the same block which is present over here and that's why it's easy to read easy to maintain okay so i just wanted to show you this yeah so i hope it's clear why we prefer application.yaml over application.properties if you found the video helpful please like subscribe and hit the bell icon 
Also, don't forget to catch today's tip of the day.